Now I'd like to discuss um, the agency's efforts around diversity and inclusion. And last summer, I watched, as most of us did, the death of George Floyd under the knee of a Minneapolis police officer. And that was one more in a seemingly unending series of images of black men dying at the hands of law enforcement. And I watched that with, with some pain and, and really sadness at another child losing her father and at the injustice of it, which is increasingly viewed as a persistent injustice that's tangled with the persistent issue of racism in our nation. And I watched, again, as many of us did, the protests that erupted across the country in the wake of Mr. Floyd's death, mainly peaceful, but also spilling into considerable lawlessness. And I wondered, you know, how can this be a half century from the civil rights movement? I wondered, you know, how do we get past this? And I thought of my agency and our employees and how it might be affecting them. And I thought of some of the agency's truly outstanding leaders, outstanding scientists and engineers who have to teach their children special rules for interacting with law enforcement and even how to enter a grocery store simply because of their skin color. And I thought of the heightened worry those parents carry when they send their children into the world simply because of their race. And so I grappled what to do at this moment. You know, what is the appropriate response for a state agency and its leadership? And I'll confess, this is, this is an uncomfortable topic for me as it is for many of us. And I was not eager to engage it. I was not chomping at the bit to have this conversation, but as a leader of a workforce that is culturally and racially diverse, um, of a workforce that serves a diverse population as we have here in Texas, and as a leader of an agency that values that diversity, you know, silence was, was not on the menu. I, it really was not an option. And I discovered, uh, much to my relief actually, that our executive team had been asking themselves the same question. What are we supposed to do at this moment? Director Baker and his team were actually a couple steps ahead of me, developing plans to foster a conversation within the agency about race and diversity and uh, planning additional steps to ensure a diverse and inclusive workforce and culture at TCEQ. So I'd like to share some of what we're doing, but let me begin with two quick points. First, there's a hard-nosed business case for diversity. Research from Harvard Business Review, McKinsey and Company, and other outlets tell us that diversity enhances innovation, that it enhances problem-solving capacity and creativity, it expands the talent pool, it dampens bias, and it improves profitability. So Diversity and inclusion are valuable, not only through the lens of social justice, but also for their economic and performance benefits. The second point is that TCEQ's recent efforts are a reaffirmation of the agency's values. TCEQ's work to help disadvantaged communities goes back decades, including our work with vendors through the agency's historically underutilized business program or hub program, and with student interns through our Mickey Leland Environmental Internship Program, which I'll say a little bit more about later. So here are some of our current activities on diversity and inclusion. And these are the recent activities that we've initiated. We are gathering and analyzing and monitoring diversity data across the agency. We are benchmarking other agencies' practices, including the Teachers Retirement System, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, and TxDOT. We're engaging our employees by having small group meetings, which are billed as coffee with exec, so that our, our executive leadership and our commissioners can hear firsthand what our employees think we are doing well and what we are missing as it relates to diversity. And we've now had several of these meetings and they've actually been a great way to generate ideas about um, moving the agency forward. And our employees have really appreciated the opportunity to engage on these issues as well. Um, we're also rolling out a diversity mentoring program. We are intensifying our recruiting efforts with minority professional organizations, 
as well as at historically black colleges and universities. We're developing a, a video series and virtual field trips aimed at minority students in middle and high school to encourage them to pursue a STEM education and to build their confidence in their own abilities and their own possibilities, all with the goal of enhancing diversity in the environmental fields. When hiring, we now post our leadership positions to attract a wider pool of candidates. And we're giving even greater attention to our hub program and the Mickey Leland Environmental Internship Program so that those pr programs perform even better. Um, last October, the commission held a public work session on all of these efforts. So if you're interested in getting into the weeds on what TCEQ is doing, you can watch the archive video of that meeting. Um, so we have a lot going on, but um, I'm fully aware that our agency's efforts, as multifaceted as they are, are not likely to register on the difficult, persistent national conversation around race and justice that, uh, that raged this past summer. But our willingness to talk about these issues within our TCEQ family, even though it's uncomfortable at times, that conversation is leading to, to positive outcomes. And I believe these efforts around diversity are going to help us better serve our fellow Texans, as well as create a stronger and richer culture within the agency. And so I'm really excited about these efforts. And, and I know they've been energizing for our executive leadership and many of our employees as well.